happy one year anniversary yes yes to us happy one year anniversary to all the huggable hipsters my hands are going all over the place because i'm excited i've had coffee and i'm excited yeah i'm just really really pumped right now because i didn't think that i would last this long honestly and we have 1200 people we have 1200 amazing people on this channel and i'm really really happy and it's april 5th it's first day I put out ever like a gaming video and I was so no god I almost knocked my coffee over <laughs> I was so nervous to put out a gaming video if you guys have not seen my very first video that I posted on this channel I will leave it as a link in as like an annotation uh, at the end of the video and a link in the description below yeah the first video that I put out was Five Nights at Freddy's 4 and that was the first thing that I saw Dan and Phil play ever because whenever I was watching their channel that was like one game that I heard of but I never really knew what it was until I saw that I was like this game is scary I want to play it I've seen and heard of like the other Five Nights at Freddy's I don't know why I started with number four but that's one that looked the most interesting to me this year has been a year of triumph success just overcoming just being excited and happy and getting to a place where I want to be and I never would have gotten to the place I am right now on YouTube without you guys and I know that a lot of youtubers say that I never really understood it before and it's like now I finally get it I finally understand it so because I'm really really excited and I'm really really happy that we have our one year anniversary leave an idea for a piece of merchandise or something that you want to see on the channel something unique something scary something that you know you don't think any other YouTuber would do, leave it as a comment down below and I will film it, I'll make it, I'll try to accommodate it into like a video or something like that and you know I really want to incorporate more of your guys' ideas into what I do as a YouTuber. Because honestly I started YouTube six years ago with my first channel, with my music channel. That just reached 99 subscribers and this already has 1200 with me only being on here a year which is interesting but it's understandable because i post more on here than i ever did on my music channel which i will be starting my music channel again it's gonna be interesting i'm gonna be posting more covers i have an ep coming out called 3 a.m it's gonna be coming out august 20th 2018 so good exciting guys i'm really really stoked about this ep if you guys want to hear my music i will be putting also a link in the description below and an annotation at the end of the video but enough about that we're gonna get into a story time because girl i don't have the tea not spill the tea but i might be spill my coffee very soon. Several people requested me that I explain and tell my Warped Tour story. Now, you gotta understand, I had a very interesting time at Warped Tour. Not so sure if I would ever do it again, but you know, if the right band was there and I were like seeing all the bands that I really enjoyed like I thought I was going to last time, then I might consider it. But you know, if like a situation happened like it did last time, forget about it. So as you guys can see in the title, it's not clickbait. I swear this actually happened. I passed out from heat exhaustion. I'm going to go the long way in order to get to that part of the story, but it starts out it was on fleek. It was it was amazing. Because I wake up, I was I woke up at like 4 a.m. with one of my friends at the time, and she and I were like, you know, getting ready. I was getting my makeup and hair on. Shut up, phone. I'm in the middle of a warped tour story time. I was getting my makeup on. I was doing my hair. I was making myself up like there was no tomorrow because I thought that, hey, you know what? My makeup would stay on the entire day. Nope. Your makeup does not stay on the entire day when you are at Warp Tour. It melts off. It will just be a hot mess, distress. Just <sighs> because I remember specifically watching videos that stated don't wear heavy amounts of makeup and I'm just like I don't know why I avoided that rule I don't know why I avoided that rule I wanted to look pretty but then I just remembered oh be realistic about this it's gonna be hot outside and it was hot it was like 95 degrees I think at one point it was like 100 it felt like that I know I might be over dramatizing the situation but it felt extremely extremely warm and on my part too I didn't drink enough water during the day so that was my part. Okay, I'm gonna cross my legs for this one because this is this is gonna get intense and I need to be in serious mode. So the day started off really well. We ended up getting coffee and drinks and all that kind of stuff in the very beginning. Uh, we went to the Warped Tour that was in Homedale, New Jersey, and it was really interesting to see how the layout was done. Like the way they set up like the raffle areas and the games and the concert areas. It was just really, really cool. And we got a chance to go there and just stay online 
for a ridiculous amount of time. <laughs> like, I cannot tell you how long it felt like I was on there. I think we were online for only an hour, but it felt like 24 hours because of how hot it was already at like 10 o'clock in the morning. We got there like two hours in advance and we were good on timing, but my mom actually had to go back to the car and like stay in the air conditioning because it was getting extremely warm. So yeah, we get into the gates, everything's fine. Like, okay, a little backtracking, a little thing before that. Like we are like standing outside, it's freaking hot. My mom was in the car, I felt so bad because I was just like, well, what did you see here? But you know, we had like those mini like air things that were just like blowing air in our face like, oh. But yeah, we had to, you know, she wanted to get our uh, cold off, which is completely understandable. So whenever we were about to get to the gate, like I could see the holy grail before me of the ticket person thing just standing there. <laughs> Not a ticket person thing, like the ticket collector person. The person who collects the holy grail of the ticket. So we're like a couple people behind and like these really awesome band members. I was about to say really cute band members, but you know, female. Fuck it. They were awesome. They were hot. They were coming towards us, and I was just like also like hiding behind my friend at the time, and I was just like, then I come and said, what? Okay, awkward self, shield, clothes off, <laughs> right here. So, yeah, we were um, standing there, they were passing out stickers, CDs, merch, all that kind of stuff, and my bag was starting to get full. Like, I wanted to take everybody's stuff, because I was just like, I want to listen to all your music, I want to be able to be supportive. So I had like a little mini duffel bag thing with me. So I end up, you know, just hunching over my shoulder, like the hunchback of music Notre Dame or something, and it was just, it was crazy. So we finally get inside, we're there, I pass my ticket to the lady, I'm like shaking, I'm just like, here you go. It wasn't like that, I was just like, thank you. Run, 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 run. So we get in there, we hear New Year's Day is starting to set up their stuff. They are sounding awesome. I don't care if they're setting up their stuff, I would pay to hear them read the fucking telephone book. They are amazing. So we hear them, we hear set it off starting to set up their stuff, because they go on, they went on at like in the afternoon, I think, was it? No, it wasn't. It was like at 6 p.m. because I remember in the afternoon they had their signing and they were one of the, like, the bands I really wanted to see. Spoiler alert, I didn't get to see them. But I really wanted to see them. I really wanted to see Black Veil Brides. I know Andy Black is performing this year on Warped Tour, if anybody's interested. Uh, so we were there, we were just checking out like all the stuff that's going on. I was trying to find the TI, uh, I was about to say tank, <laughs> the TI, uh, event that was going on because you can get like different lessons from different music artists and all that kind of stuff on how to do drumming, how to make it in the music business, how to, you know, a, a train your dragon, I don't know. <laughs> there were just like several different classes that you could take on the area in music that you were most interested in, which I thought was cool. Pay $21 for the tickets. But here's the catch. I did not get an email. I did not receive confirmation or anything like that saying that, oh, you have to be here at this time. No, I did not receive any of that. I checked my email several times throughout the day. I didn't get any of it. And it was coming close to 12 o'clock whenever I was supposed to be at the class. And I asked several people on the Warp Tour venue, and this is what's really weird. No one, not a single soul in the entire venue knew where the TI place think tank event class thing was so i was just basically going in like a blind fart i was just i was passing in the wind i was just going i was not even thinking i was just walking aimlessly everywhere i was lost i was just not it was not a good situation so i finally find the event and i'm like okay are we allowed to go in it's 12 30. The event starts at 12. Damn. So I said, okay, can I at least get a refund? And uh, apparently the tickets are non-refundable. I spent $21 to just walk aimlessly and look like a hobo eating its salad. Like, can I please get some help here? Like, it was it was it, it just a not good situation. And I ended up getting a class that was with Andy Beersack. I was just, I was like so excited, but it was, you know, it didn't end up happening. So boohoo. That wasn't the only thing that was bad. I just got like really weird guys staring at me constantly. It was just not a good situation. I was, I was dressed in all black, which made everything really warm. Never dress in all black to warp tour. Seriously, you will regret it. You will get heat exhaustion and you will pass out. Just do not do it. It is a bad life choice. So then after that, we were looking at different people to go see. After I went to try, try and fail miserably to get into the class that had um, Andy from Black Hill Brides, I went 
and I heard that it's a corner of my ear, Bless the Fall. So I was able to see Bless the Fall, the first con concert within a concert done successfully, and it was the first time I've ever seen Bless the Fall. They were absolutely amazing. I got to be in the mosh pit. That fucking rocked. It was amazing. I was able to get close enough to where I think one of the dudes, and I, I remember his face, but I know he told me his name. I don't remember his name at all. <laughs> he looked like an Alex, so that's what we're gonna call him. We're gonna call him Alex. So this dude named Alex ended up like lifting me up and I ended up like crowd surfing. It was my first attempt at crowd surfing. It was successful and it was really exciting because I'd never done that before. I was terrified and I was just like, okay, what's gonna happen? He was just like, yeah, no, relax, relax. We're just gonna lift you up and you're gonna like ride to like surf the crowd. And yeah, it was just really cool. I just never crowd surfed before and that was, that was pretty, pretty effing awesome. And just getting to like, be a part of a Blessed Fall area, hearing their music live for the first time, it was very, very satisfying. So after that, we continue on looking at all the different like venues and tents and all that kind of stuff, and we had, there was a signing that uh, set it off had, and I was fortunate enough to get to go to the signing and to get to meet them in person, and here is a picture right here of me with them. I know. I know, I love it, I love it. It's one of my favorite pictures ever. I got to meet Cody and Max and all of them. It was just, oh. And Dan is such a sweetheart. Like, oh my gosh, like all of them. They are just all freaking sweethearts. Like I go up and I was just so shy about meeting them. It was, it was weird, I know me shy, right? But I go up and I'm just like, hi Cody. Apparently Cody is like just an inch taller than I am. So I was like almost eye level with him, which is interesting because I thought he was taller, like way taller for some reason. So we get there, I was taking my picture. I was looking like a doofy doo. And then like, and I'm not even joking, like 15 minutes later, I end up bumping in to Max, the drummer. And he's just a freaking sweetheart all around. I, I'm telling you guys, if you end up meeting the band to set it off, all of them are just genuine sweethearts. So we were talking about music. I was telling him that I was in a band at, at the time. And, you know, it was just a really cool conversation. I was telling him that hopefully I would get on to work toward for 2018. And it was just, you know, it was just a really, really cool conversation. I did not get a solo picture with him, which I regret not getting. And I wish I would have gotten one because I would have shown you guys. And maybe next time when I see them, I'll hopefully get like a solo picture with each of them, so something to look forward to. And then after that, we were looking at the other bands. I know that uh, Andy and his band Black Hill Brides was supposed to perform at 8 o'clock that night, and we were going to be seeing his girl, Juliet Sims, perform, and I got to see her, which was absolutely fantastic. Oh my god, she is so good live. I remember the first time I ever heard her was the song Hush, like way in the way back, the song Hush, if you guys don't know it, it's absolutely incredible. You guys will love it. Here, you know what? I'll put a snippet here. That way you guys can enjoy just a small bit of it. I know, beautiful, right? She has an amazing voice. Like, I seriously, I don't know why she didn't win the voice. Seriously. Like, bitch please. I was just really excited to get to see her live. I was like in the front. I like got pushed for some reason. I know it's Warped Toys so you're going to get pushed fucking everywhere. I woke up with like bajillions and quatillions amounts of bruises. It was just, it was worth it though. So I ended up getting like pushed into the front which I don't mind. You push me to the front? I don't mind. You're pushing me to any kind of front of any kind of concert. I don't mind it whatsoever. So I got to see her. I was singing along. We made eye contact. It was something special. Okay. You, you underestimate how excited and fangirl I was to see this woman perform because I was hearing her music for so long and to finally get to see her perform. I also have pictures. Not very good pictures, but here, here's a picture of her. So she had a signing that we were supposed to go to and we were standing in line I think for maybe half an hour because she was like there were really a lot of people in line. She had a tiny booth so I mean it was understandable like the crowd size that started to accumulate and we were almost there. We were like I think 10 or 12 people behind and I started feeling dizzy. I'm like, oh shit. So one of my friends starts pouring water on top of me and she's just like, well, you know, let's, you know, are you sure you want to stay in line? You don't want to go to like, you know, the emergency tent or something. I'm like, no, we're staying here. I'm gonna wait till the Juliet Sam's and we're gonna wait till we get up further in line because I need to meet this woman, okay? Lo and behold, my body was like, no bitch, you're not waiting anymore. 
I pass out from heat exhaustion right onto the freaking fence. I'm like leaning, I'm just like holding onto the fence for dear life. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And I ended up, what seemed to me was just falling asleep into a, a drifting passer mind something. And I just started falling asleep. And before I knew it, I was, I was out. So I had to be carried over to the emergency tent. They put ice all over me. After that, I woke up like a shot. I was just like, who put tequila in my ice patch? Like seriously, who did it? I want to know the culprit. Thank you, but I want to know the culprit. And it was so embarrassing because I think she saw me and uh, my friend at the time, she told me that she was like leaning over in her tent and I was just like, oh no. I just made an embarrassing statement of who I was in front of Juliet Sims. <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure she, she saw it. Sorry for passing out right in front of you, Juliet, if you're watching this. Sorry. But yeah, that was interesting. Uh, I, I was literally in that tent. I had to like take my blood pressure and all that kind of stuff taken care of. I, I have asthma, too, really bad one. I have uh, bronchitis as well. So whenever I was in there, I took part of an inhaler. It was just bad. I had so much water. It was unbelievable. I think like I peed forever the next day. Like I was not out of the bathroom. I know it's TMI, but oh my gosh. So after that, we ended up walking around for a bit. We saw some other like up and coming bands, which were really, really cool. I'm, I feel so bad that I don't remember the name, but they just sounded really cool. They had like a mix of electronic and alternative and it was their first time and it was a lot of like Ernie Ball contest winners. So it was really, really cool to see like what kind of music they had and their potential and everything that they created. And I just think it was just so cool because a lot of them just were great in general. I had nothing bad to say about them. I think one from them was just extremely shy and he just like didn't know how to act in front of the audience. He was just like, yes. He was so genuinely sweet, but I don't think he knew how to handle like the Warped Tour crowd in the way that, you know, he wanted to at least. But, you know, kudos for him putting himself out there because not a lot of people can do that. And then after that to end the day, it was just a hot mess distress. Like we were trying to find our way out, we couldn't find our way out. And it was just a mix because I really loved the experience that I had at Warped Tour, but it was just there was so much that went wrong that I don't know if I'd ever go again. I want to go this year, but there are not enough acts that I genuinely like to be able to go. And there are a lot of old fashioned, like, you know, like really good rock music genuinely. And I know I just contradicted myself there, but it's not music that I've ever listened to repeatedly and became a fan of. Like they're good music, but it's not, you know, enough to be like, yeah, I'm gonna buy a $45 ticket in order to just, you know, go there for like three people that I really like. I think maybe four, because I know, um, who is it? Silverstein, 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 Silver, Silverstein is playing. Andy Black is playing. Um, Buzz the Fall is playing again, which is awesome. Um, a few others are playing that I enjoy, but not enough to be like really, really excited about it this year. I mean, it's cool that Andy Black is playing with his like solo, solo career, solo uh, act and everything like that, which is really awesome. I enjoy his music, but it's, you know, unless you were, you know, unless like there were other people who were playing, like I said, like there were like 10 bands that I really, really liked. And I got to see Silverstein last year, not last year, um, the year before, 2015. Um, I'm sad that Icy Stars couldn't make it out on 2015 tour, but they were on last year's tour. And I was just like, damn it, I could have gotten to see them that year. But you know, it's, it's like a pick and choose because you don't know what you're gonna get with what year until like the very last minute. So um, yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Maybe they'll have some last minute announcements and everything like that that they're gonna add to the list, but I can't see myself going this year at all to World Tour. <laughs> because after what happened last time, I don't want to have heat exhaustion. I know it's about doing it the right way, but there's just a lot that you have to do for something that might not even end up being that good. Because whenever I went to see like the different little concerts and everything like that, they only played two or three songs. And I know that's like, you know, what you're supposed to do a warp tour it's like the um the thing that's supposed to happen because i know like it's not like a typical concert where it's dedicated to one band and they play an entire set of like 10 or 15 songs of theirs but it's very very small it's confined after you do like once you have to go on to the next and it goes very very fast so i understand that it's marketing too because you know you have one band 
go on right next to the other because you had the right and left foot stages and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's really technical. It gets confusing at times because it's like the map and the layout for certain places. It's just like, well, I have to make time for this concert, but I also want to see this one. And if one conflicts with the other, it's like, oh, I hate when that happens because I know that, um, what is it, Blessed Fall was conflicting with another band that I wanted to see and I traded up the band to see Bless the Fall and I was just like, oh, why? Like for me personally, I just like seeing one show that's dedicated to one artist, for example. I think in June, I might get the chance to see Icy Star as a coal fest. So that might be really cool to see them for the first time live. I know they're, they just released their new album in June of last year, so it'll be like a little one-year anniversary that they're having. So yeah, if any of you guys are going to the Coal Fest, let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my Warp Tour story. I know it wasn't very gaming related, but it was something that was requested by a lot of people, so I thought I knew the story, and yeah, it was fun to tell you guys because I don't normally share with you like a lot of like the music stuff that I do and everything, so I think I'm gonna start incorporating that into the future years that we do Hunkable Hipster Gaming. So I'm gonna be incorporating more music, kind of like a, um, a Nate Wants to Battle kind of thing, where he does like music, but he also has like Nate and Dookie. So I think I'm gonna be doing something like that, where I have like just my music channel, and just my gaming channel, but you're gonna see like inserts of like music stuff and references and all that kind of thing. So it'll be cool. And if you guys enjoyed this video, also please hit that like button, it means a lot. I have a link that is going to be at the very end of this video also for my Patreon. I think it's going to be like as a card throughout the video if you want to click on it and become a Patreon. I just set that up. So yeah, I mean, you know, spend a dollar on your huggable hipster. What's the harm that it could bring? Because I really want to bring good quality stuff to you guys and as you guys know it's harder in YouTube to do that right now so yeah become a Patreon and I will send you guys some cool prizes I'll get to Skype with you guys I'll be sending you some merch all that cool stuff here's to the next years in YouTube stay casually nerdy and I will talk to you all in the next video peace <laughs>